New Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today, we take you to the heart of downtown Calgary, where this past weekend, a significant event unfolded at this year's Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention. The convention, a pivotal gathering of municipal leaders from across Canada, had a speech from NDP leader Jugmeet Singh, who, due to a pending strike in British Columbia, was unable to attend the four-day conference in person, but did virtually address the delegates gathered. As hundreds of municipal leaders, city planners, and of local government officials gathered in the bustling conference halls at the TELUS Convention Center, Singh spoke about the need for more infrastructure funding and support for municipalities. The appearance was moderated by Ottawa City Councilor and now second vice president of FCM, Tim Tierney. Checkmate, you're here. All right, so I'll just go right to the question, my good friend. Uh, so how will your party work to ensure communities of all sizes uh, help support that core infrastructure, the part of the puzzle that has to be there, including water, sanitation, roads, transit, community centers, and much more. Good, sir. Thanks so much, Tim. First of all, if you're going to wear a peach suit and an orange tie, I'm showing up anywhere you are. So just <laughs> let's put that out there. Uh, I also wanted to say to the folks, uh, thank you so much for being here and for attending a virtual session. I actually wanted to be there in person, and what had happened is we had, we had gotten word that there was gonna be a strike, the CBSA strike, which meant that there was no uh, air travel uh, from international airports would be considered crossing the picket line, so I committed not to do that, and then that strike got pushed back anyway, so we are in this position. So I was planning to be there, schedule the flight, cancel the flight, but thank you for taking it this way. Um, Tim, in terms of uh, partnership, I look at the housing crisis as really a question of affordability, and we're seeing that it has become unaffordable across the country, but particularly, I want to make the case, it is very unaffordable in big cities in our, in our country. It, it is extremely unaffordable, and people are saying uh, there's just no futures, particularly for young people. It's nice to see everybody uh, waving at themselves as they're getting panned in the camera. That's very cool. Uh, there is no future for young people, young families, uh, recent new grads in big cities in our, in our country because they cannot find a home that's affordable. So uh, to solve this problem, we absolutely will not benefit from finger pointing, blaming one level of government or another. That is wrong. That's not how you solve a problem by blaming the municipality or blaming, blaming the It's forcing everyone to work together to come up with solutions is, is the way we move forward. Uh, and cutting services or cutting investments is going to make it even worse. If we've got a problem now of not having homes that are affordable, cutting that funding that we, that we need to build those homes that are affordable, cutting that's going to make it even worse. So we absolutely need to work together. We absolutely need to stop the finger pointing. And we need to make sure that there is, there's real funding. And one of the challenges that I know you know very well, Tim, and, and the folks in the room know, many municipalities, many uh, local governments want to build but their infrastructure can barely sustain their existing population. And it is impossible to go beyond that if you can't actually have the right infrastructure in your, in your local community. So we need to invest in, in infrastructure to meet the needs of the local community and then to be able to expand as well. So that's one big necessity. And the federal government is in the best position to do that because for a lot of local governments, it's just, there's just impossible uh, amounts of, of capital needed to meet the infrastructure needs. So, so we need the federal government to step up there and provide that support. So I wanna make sure that everyone can live in communities across our country and it is affordable to find a place to call home. To do that, we need to work together. We need real investments. A couple of things that I should add on to that. Uh, we wanna make sure that there is real investments in affordable housing and to probably force the government to bring in things like the Rapid Housing Initiative, the Housing Accelerator. Uh, those are things that are working and we, want, we wanted more of that. Uh, we also know that uh, climate mitigation and adaption has to go hand in hand with the idea of building more homes. When we build and expand our communities, we also need to make sure that they are ready for what has now become more and more common extreme weather. So that's something that I would also put into that answer that we need to work together to build homes that people can afford. We also need to invest in the transit. If we build more homes, how are people going to get around? We need transit investments. And we also need to make sure that our communities are climate adapted so that we are building for the future in a real way. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Jagmeet. And so that leads to my next question. It's, are you reading my notes here? The, 
uh, municipal growth framework. It is the talk of the town, and we are certainly talking quite a bit about that. Uh, you're familiar with it. Uh, we've all been educated here through the conference about an old antiquated system of how municipalities are getting funded, or not being funded, I should say. Uh, that being said, we're calling on the federal government to initiate critical first steps in the 2024 fall economic statement to increase direct annual transfers to municipalities uh, by $2.6 billion and a link to the economic growth. Now, are, are you open to further discussion on how we can move forward on this? And I, I know you're well versed on the old model versus our new framework. Please give us what your thoughts on that. Uh, premièrement, oui, je suis toujours ouvert uh, aux conversations pour, uh, pour trouver des solutions, particulièrement pour uh, nos municipalités. Uh, ça, c'est essentiel. Je comprends les défis. Je comprends que uh, on est dans une situation impossible pour les municipalités où vous avez une grande responsabilité de livrer des services, mais pas beaucoup de moyens pour payer pour ces services. So I get it. It is really difficult, impossibly difficult for municipalities to have to continue to deliver massive services and have really limited finance, or limited resources or revenue to deliver those really important services. So it is a very impossible situation. So absolutely, I am, I am committed to having those conversations about how we can address that. I remember I read in the submissions that FCM had that you described our funding formula as a 19th century approach to a 21st century challenge, and it doesn't fit. So yes, I'm committed to that. We need to find better ways working together so that local governments, municipalities can deliver the services that they need to for their for the residents and have a, a revenue that actually allows them to do that or mechanisms that allow them to do that. The existing limitation of just having a property tax as the only revenue source is very limiting, is not rising to the occasion or meeting the times. And so I hear you loud and clear on that. And yes, I'm committed to, to those conversations and how we can move forward in a better way. Great, thank you for that. Yeah, great answer, absolutely. And just from your perspective, uh, municipalities across the country, we're the workhorses, uh, we're the front lines. And um, what, what's your, your vision of cities in the future? Um, do you see us having a greater role, uh, not just you know, a corporation of the provinces? Uh, we're actually more involved uh, on day to day because as I mentioned, we're not doing the standard uh, municipal work of the old days as we remember of potholes and light bulbs. It's a much different world these days. So just real briefly, do you have any thoughts on where municipalities are gonna go as a level of government? Yeah, thank you for the question. I would say you all know this really well, and, and I know this from my, my years as a provincial parliamentarian. The, the number of calls I would get into my office that were related to municipal issues, we, we would get a huge chunk of calls, emails, correspondences, because people really in their day-to-day -day lives, the first line of defense, the first response, the first thing they think about is they think about their city. They think about their local level of government. That's where they think when they need for when they need help or when they need a, a problem solved. And, and those are their concerns. So you are directly and deeply connected with everyday's, with people's everyday concerns. And it, to me, it's a missed opportunity if we don't have a better way to engage with the folks that are really meeting people where they're at in the most important ways. So municipalities, for your direct connection to people, for the important services that you deliver, have to be a part of a solution when we look at all the problems we're up against as a country. We think about our, our affordability crisis, we think about fighting the climate crisis, we think about all the challenges. I believe that we need to better engage municipalities and local governments and, and really have a very collaborative approach. Local governments, provincial, federal, together solving problems. That's why I started off my comment saying the finger pointing, blaming one level of government, that's not the way. Uh, if there's a particular policy that we want to critique of a particular government, that's one thing. But this blanket approach that I'm hearing from conservatives that say, that when Pierre Polyev attacks municipalities because it says, oh, mayors are to blame or local councillors are to blame, that approach is not solving anything. Uh, if you've got an issue with the policy, yes, let's approach that. And so I think people have a really important choice in the next election. 
You got a choice between uh, Pierre Poilievre, who wants to cut services, cut investments to municipalities, wants to attack them, or me, uh, uh, New Democrats who want to work with municipalities, work with local governments, invest in solutions, and are, are, are ready to do that work. So I, I think the choice is clear. Great, thank you for that, and really appreciate that. And I just saw the clock tick up. We got a couple more minutes now, and I, I do appreciate that. It just changed, and thank you to our wonderful techs here. So. Uh, you know, again, maybe if I could ask you to speak to homelessness and housing and how the federal government uh, has a direct role or should have a direct role in providing some of that housing. Maybe some of your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. I would say uh, from touring across the country, it's one of the most heartbreaking challenges that we're up against in communities that have never seen housing encampments or seeing them. Uh, they're seeing people that have they've never been. I've been to local communities where they've never had this issue. They've never actually seen uh, people at the level of pain that they're going through right now not be able to find a home that they can afford because rents are so high, there's so little affordable home, there's so little afford there's so little available period into communities where the vacancy rates are so low, there's just nothing available. Even if you had a place and you lost it, you would end up with nowhere to go. So those, those needs and that struggle and that, that pain is at a level that I've not seen before since getting into federal politics. Uh, so it's it's quite serious. And there is no question the federal government has to play a massive role in, in solving this. I think there's got to be direct solutions around people that are that are, don't have homes, the unhoused homelessness. We directly have to find ways to house people. I really believe in the principle they say that to deal with a lot of challenges in someone's life, taking a housing first approach, that the first thing you need to do is get someone in a home. Then and only then can you help them with rehab or uh, treatment of an illness or, Ill or, or other mental health issues. People need a home first and foremost, and that's been put in place in a number of countries and it's worked really well. So yes, we've got to have the federal government involved. I also think we've got to really examine overall housing. If we think the solution is gonna come from just building more homes without having a what, caveat to that, we're not gonna solve the problem because we're losing more homes that are affordable than we're being built. It's 11 affordable homes are being lost for every one that is affordable. So we've got to keep the homes that we do have. That's why we fought for a renter's protection fund to keep the affordable housing that we do have. We also need to build homes that are purposely built to be affordable. We can't just allow and expect that private development of condos and market housing is going to solve the problem. We need to purposely build homes that are designed for affordability. So looking at not-for-profit options, looking at cooperative homes, looking at other ways to build homes that are purposely built to be affordable to rent or to own. That's something that's got to be a part of the solution because when people have a place to live that's affordable, it takes off the pressure and we can address uh, housing in general, but also very specifically the issue of homelessness and those that are unhoused. So there are a lot of solutions out there. We have to have the will. I would put to you again that New Democrats are committed to this. We believe we have to be involved. The federal government has to be an active partner. Uh, we can't take a step away. We have to invest in the solutions. And then and only then will we solve them. Great, thank you. Terrific answer. Thank you very much. Um, My pleasure. Uh, two very brief questions. I see it's blinking at me. Uh, the first one is uh, there's this little hockey game going on tonight. Uh, <laughs> I, I caution you, there's orange in the color of the team. I think we all want to win. Who are you cheering for tonight? Florida <laughs> or, or the Oilers? It's the Oilers. Say the Oilers. Oh, fine. I think all Canadians can unite around a Canadian team being in the finals. So uh, there's lots of folks jumping on the bandwagon. I am proudly a bandwagon uh, jumper. So let's go and let's win this one. And, and final question before you depart uh, us today, and I thank you for all your time. Uh, we always do this together. You always make time for a selfie. And since I have the crowd in the background here today and we have you on the screen, uh, we're going to wave frantically and scream and cheer. And I want to thank you for coming out here today. Ready? Toi, de, un. Great. Thank you very much, Jagmeet, for coming out and joining us today. Uh, that, con that concludes our, our speaker's component for this. Uh, there's more to come, and at this point, we'll get the wonderful Catherine Clark to come back out and tell you about what's going to happen for the rest of the day today. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Jagmeet. Now, before we let you go, I just want to take a moment and say thank you to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for allowing us to attend this year's convention here in beautiful Calgary, Alberta. This episode would not have been possible without their support. 
Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now, wherever you're watching this or listening to this. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs from coast to coast to coast. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.